warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome our guest speaker today. We share Ali Masood. Sheikh Ali is from Ghana, where he studied in the field of Islamic studies at the University of Hosan Ilmia. Sheikh Ali is currently a researcher at the University of Johannesburg in the Department of Semitic Cultures and Languages. He is also currently writing a book on Eastern languages, as well as being the Imam of Kwanda Bel Bajir in Mualanga. His topic today is the relevance of the Islamic Revolution pertaining to present times. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارع الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا بالقاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعاله الطاهرين المعصومين وأصحابه المنتجبين ما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه حدا للمتقين صدق الله العلي العظيم وبلد رسول كريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين First of all, I give thanks to Almighty Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala Send praises to Rasulullah and his family and his holy companions It is so important that when Rasul called you respond. This is what Quran said. I've been given the responsibility to speak about the relevance of 
the Islamic revolution pertaining to our time. Before I go into my uh, topic, I would like to point out few points and finally link it to my topic. The first point that I need to make is about our society. Almighty Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in number of verses in the Holy Quran made men to know that it is the responsibility of man to bring about change in his society. You one of the purpose of your creation is to serve Almighty Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. In the process of serving Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Almighty Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala also wants you to bring what? Change in your society. We read in the Quran. Let there be a group of people who will be inviting towards good. And then advising people to refrain from bad. Al Amr bil Ma'ruf wa Nahi anil Munka. Another verse of the Quran. إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم الله تبارك وتعالى does not change the situation of people حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم until and unless the people themselves stand up give thought to this eye. It is about the society. It is about the community in which we live in. Allah is saying, you don't have to wait for me to come and bring the change. It is you people who have the responsibility to bring about the change. I am going to give one example in the seerah of Al Mustafa Muhammad. He said there are very important things. If you are looking for a change, these things you need them. There are three. One, an accurate understanding of the situation of the time. It is so important. Don't forget it is our responsibility to bring about change in our society. And then, if you are starting, if you are embarking on your journey, one according to Mustafa Muhammad, an accurate understanding of the situation in which we are living. That is one. If you don't have the understanding of the time, you will be lost. And then the second point that Al Mustafa mentioned clarity about the goal. Clarity about where you are going. It is so important. I am going to Johannesburg. But I'm not sure of what I'm going to do there. Number three, and the process through which this will be achieved. 
very important points to note. If you go to the seerah of Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, you will realize that Mustafa, his mission was about changing the society. Began his mission in Mecca, ended his mission in Medina. What was the nature of that society when Muhammad al-Mustafa began his mission? It was corrupt, jahi. It was anything bad you can think of. Where people bury their daughters alive. Where the strong person will take from the weak. No direction in the Jahili community. So Mustafa had the responsibility of changing this community. What did he do? He set out to challenge and demolish it and finally replaced it with a society based on Islamic principles and them. And that began when Al-Mustafa started his mission in Al-Makka, in Makkah. He never compromised with the setup of Jahiliya. Challenge it by the help of Almighty Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Muhammad al Mustafa defeated at Takbir. The process for this change was the, was the immobilization of a group of people who were totally convinced that the message the noble prophet delivered was from Allah and that they believed prevailed in Makkah inherited from their forefathers were wrong. Muhammad was not alone. He was with his companions. The companions were with Muhammad. Quran mentioned it. What did Quran say? وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِبْدَاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَارِ That is the companions of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam knowing the mission of Al-Mustafa. What, what was the mission? To change the Jahili community. To change the mindset. To uproot the corruption. The companions were with Muhammad. They were convinced that whatever advice, whatever step that Muhammad took, it's from Almighty Allah Ta'ala. They supported and they achieved that. What happens? They uprooted whatever thing that is not based on logic. Whatever thing that lead to the exploitation of people, Muhammad and their close companions close to him, they manage to approach it. Coming back to you, you have the responsibility to change or to make a difference in your society. Individually or group, we have that responsibility. The early Muslims were unconditionally committed to changing this situation. Regardless of the price they would have to pay at the end of the life of the noble messengers. In trying to make change, some of them lost their lives. Some of them lost their properties. Name it. But they managed to bring change in the early society of Islam. Now, in the Muslim contemporary history, 
there have been numerous movements that have the intention of wanting to bring change in the society. Why? Because they realize that there is corruption, the weaker become more weaker, and the strong become more stronger, as we see. So in the Muslim contemporary history, there have been numerous movements that have struggled to bring about this change in their respective societies. Some have reduced their struggle to local nationalism, while others have openly proclaimed they wish to implement Islamic laws in their societies. In a way, I'm trying to tell you there are different movements that have this same thinking of wanting to bring change in their, in their society, taking different routes. But I'm um, false to mention this point. So far, can we say there is a movement that has succeeded in wanting to bring change in our society? The state of the world today is buried. Number of movement, number of communities, a number of groups try their best wanting to bring what? Changes in the community. Can we say they've succeeded? I am taking you to a next point. There is a revolution that took place in 1979 headed by Kumeni, Ayatollah Kumeni. From ulama of different religions, from secularists, from academics, they say so far the only revolution that managed by the help of Almighty Allah Taala to bring change in the world is that Iranian revolution. But why is it like that? Why is it that the other movement did not succeed? This is not our topic for today. From what we learn, the revolution came because of a number of points. Where the hegemonic powers undermine the right of people. Disturb the right of people. Intrude in the privacy of people. And this happened for a number of times. Until this man, Khomeini, he stood and said, what are we doing? Are we not having the Quran in our hands? Is it not Allah who said, Alif Lam Neem, Zalika Al-Kitab La Raib Fih? This book, there is no doubt in this book. In a way, Khomeini was inspired by the book of Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. That is the number one source of all Muslims in the world. And the Sunnah of Al Mustafa Muhammad alayhi salatu we cannot have this and continue to suffer. Britain was in Iran for their own interest. Russia was in Iran for their own interest. 
Israel was in Iran for their own interest. America was in Iran for their own interest. Are you allowed to go into somebody's house without permission? Are you allowed to go to my house and do whatever that you please? This is what the hegemonic powers used to do. So Khomeini said, we cannot have a Quran and continue to suffer. Quran is Shifa. It's a cure. Quran is solution to our political problem. Quran is solution to our social problems. Quran is the solution to all our problems. Unfortunately, the Quran is being neglected. After the Quran, you come to Sunnah Muhammadi. The Sunnah is our solution. But why must we have Quran and the Sunnah and we are still suffering? Look at the situation of Muslims today. Ya Allah. So Khomeini said, let's rise. We have the responsibility to defend ourselves. To protect our territory. Yeah. So they took it from there. From the view of Ayatollah Khomeini, it is a test. Allah wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ahsib al nas an yutarabu an yakulu amanna wa humla yuftanun. Do men think? After saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah will not test them. Allah will test us. But after the test, what happens? So Khomeini said, we need jihad. We need effort. As long as we don't struggle, we don't put effort, the intruders will keep coming to our country. The intruders will keep coming and setting us, making us to fight each other. So this came with the revolution of 1979. We can say with confidence that both the Ikhwan is one of the movement that had, you know, it on their shoulders to bring about change. Ikhwan in Egypt, Jamaat al Islami in Pakistan, they were also very, you know, effective. They also had it on their shoulders to want to bring change in the world. But it was very difficult. It was very difficult. Why? Even though the Ikhwan, the Jamaat al Islam, they had very powerful leaders, very charismatic leaders, just like Khomeini. But how did the, the revolution in Iran got success? They were able to chase all these unjust people in the country. Ya Allah. How did that manage? with Quran and Sunnah Muhammad. 